I was ironing my shirt yesterday. I didn't move my steamer out the way. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So I was kind of all over the place when I wanted to talk about this video, and I want to start doing these nonstop live streams. So brace yourself. Okay, guys, brace yourself. So I think one of the things that kind of bothers me a little bit about this conversation with Ohio and Haitians, especially as it uh, pertains to Black Americans, is every time you can unsubscribe, you can dislike, you can try to beat me up in the comments. But what I have to talk about is the fact that every time we see people that look a certain way, they're a particular skin shade, we see ourselves and we project our struggles with their struggles. And um, I think a bigger part of the issue with that is a lot of times we make it about race politics. We make it about being a non-compassionate person. We don't like to admit that we're American. I'm an American first. I'm a God-fearing person that believes in God first. I'm an American second, okay? I'm a woman third, and then I'm a black woman, fourth, fifth, somewhere down the line. And because my mentality thinks like that, because I think like that, because I'm progressive in that sense, that's how I handle my life. The decisions that I like to make is based in that those categories. I believe in being compassionate. I believe in giving to other people. I believe in helping people. I really do. But unfortunately, like where the disconnect happens with a lot of people is I don't believe in giving to people while taking other people's rights away from them. And I think, um, can y'all get the likes up if you're new to my channel? I'm a Trump supporter, Trump go 2024. I think there's a problem with that. As Americans, we've been failing other Americans. Our government has been failing us. We've put skin in the game. We've paid taxes. We've gone to these jobs. We've gotten low pay. We've seen price gouging. And this economic freefall that Kamala and Joe Biden have done to this country, it's not been a mistake. This is not a fluke. This is not an accident. This is not an accidental market, market slip up. This is not by accident. This is something that, um, you know, Trump had been talking about for years. He talked about China. He talked about Russia. He talked about open border policies. He talked about the restrictions that was happening with COVID-19, although people have twisted it around and said Trump was responsible for the, the backlash and the bad things that happened after COVID, which was not true financially. It was not true. We saw some of the best economic times right after restrictions were lifted in this country. And why was that? People had a newfound energy. They were happy to be home with their kids. They were able to clean their houses. They had a much needed break. They had options on how they wanted to work. They were able to work remotely. They were finally able to move to new cities, experience new people, see life in a different light, you know, um, work on some things like their health, work on some things like, you know, maybe going back to school or maybe thinking about a different career they were able to finally, as Americans, stop just being uh, a taxpayers, 
perpetual taxpayers who are driving to these unfulfilling jobs, working for unfulfilling people at unfulfilling companies. And it, and it was the much needed break that we needed as a, a country to kind of regroup a little bit. But then there was the other side of that. People who were working brick and mortar jobs, people who couldn't easily transition to working from home, poor people got poorer. People living in poverty experienced more poverty. People who were already poor, who were barely hanging on by a thread, were having to go to food lines. They were losing their jobs in droves. And so as a result of that, we elected Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And what did they do for our country? They surmounted the problem. They said, this is a rich, see, this is the problem. And you can say, you can call me names, you can say whatever you wanna say, but sometimes when you go second, third, fourth, fifth generation of immigrant, this is the mentality you get with Kamala. You see, her mother was never living in abject poverty when she moved to America in the first place. It's an apologetic, apologizing type of mentality. Liberal, it's a staunch liberal mentality where I get to live a certain lifestyle. I've had a certain amount of privilege and middle class Americans, they just don't work hard enough. They're just not educated enough. When your middle class is what has built and sustained this country. Think of any name, think of any city you've ever lived in. And if you've never lived in different cities, Godspeed to you. But if you've ever been in different places, you have sometimes extreme people who have, which is typically a dictatorship or communism. And then you have people living way beyond, beyond um, below squalor, below poverty. And these people have nothing. So when you don't have the people in the middle striving for the top and you don't have the middle people showing the people with nothing what the middle road can look like, Maybe you're not rich and can go on vacation four times a year. Maybe you don't have yachts and investments and things like that, but you have enough to have a savings, you have enough to pay your mortgage, you have enough to get ahead. And if you're an exceptional middle-class person, you have enough to fight for your dreams and become wealthy or become you know, upper middle-class. You also have the ability to teach your kids and your kids' kids how to build to that point or at least help them to sustain themselves until they become middle class. And this is what keeps the society going. But that's not good enough for this, these people. You see, Kamala came from upper middle class because her mother was a cancer research scientists. Let, let, me, let me bring that back for those that are in the back, black folks. Kamala's mother was a cancer research scientist. So in your best day, if you are just an average middle-class person, you have not made the amount of money that Kamala's mother was making. And she came from another country where she was afforded many different rights to even be in this country because of the education that she was pursuing and she was given opportunities. But now her and Joe want to snatch opportunities from Americans that built this country. She said she wants to do opportunity. Opportunity zones was Donald Trump. I was working on this video. The video is long as I'll get up and it's going to take a whole lot of memory on my machine to complete it. So let's just be clear. I'm a minority black woman in America. I am the most hated group in demographic because I assimilate in terms of marrying out into other groups the least. Most black women don't have a lot of representation in certain, in white communities in particular. Black men are always in these communities. 
So if anybody would understand what it's like to feel like you can be marginalized, I would understand that. We're not talking about skin color here. We're talking about mindset. We're talking about culture. I'm a person that have an insurance license and guess what? I used to have Ohio as one of my appointed states. I quickly realized that Ohio was a very poor state. Many of the residents were poor. So what Kamala and Biden have done is they have taken a Springfield, Ohio, a city of 58,000 residents, and they have almost doubled the amount of people in that city. So you're taking people from 58,000 in population and you've added 20 plus thousand people. You added 20 plus thousand people who don't speak English. They tend to be lower educated because they've been giving them jobs. And then they gave, they skipped the line of path of citizenship and gave them citizenship. They gave them these things. They didn't work for these things. They gave them these things because in return, they want these citizens to vote for them during these elections. They don't care if people are driving down the road and these non these non Americanized people are in this city driving and wrecking people's cars because y'all are spending way too much time talking about ducks, cats, and dogs. It's deeper than that. You're looking at a complete paradigm shift. Their city doesn't resemble what it looked like before at all. And this happened overnight. Y'all are so busy trying to make this be about race politics, newsflash, people who are at the top, whether they yellow, green, orange, black, white, whatever, people that are at the bottom, whether they yellow, green, orange, black, or white, they have more things in common based on economics than they do based on skin color, okay? Being in an area where me and my daughter have door dashed or whatever, there are certain things that people that have money do versus things that people that don't have money do. Then there's the middle class, okay? The only two groups that seem to be able to take these tremendous losses are people that tend to be living in abject poverty and have no momentum to try to become middle class or people who are above all of that, they don't deal with middle class or low class and they have wealth. The people who are pissed off the most are the people in the middle because these are the people, again, carrying the bulk of the weight of the community. Why would a poor person care about other poor people coming here? Why would you care? It pisses me off. Why, why would poor people care about poor people coming here? Most of the time, your lifestyle is being subsidized. Why would you care? The life, type of lifestyle you're living, you don't aspire to do more. Why would you care? As long as you get to wake up and do the same thing you've been doing for however many years, Maybe you have a check coming in from this, or maybe you have a check coming in from that. Your life can be on a path like this. However, a person that's middle of the road, middle class, upper, creeping towards upper middle class, any dramatic change in population, any dramatic change in job availability is going to rock their world. And that's the problem with this. It's not about hating dark skin. Get over yourself. It's not about not wanting people to be looking like that look like me that came from a third world country. Again, cultural differences. Is it, are Americans so dumb that they don't know that people in other countries eat different things, live different lifestyles? believe in different values and serve a different God? Are we really trying to act like Americans have fallen this far 
psychologically, this is how far we've come. You cannot import 20,000 people and drop them in a city of less than even a million people and think that that city has the resources to acclimate these people in a way that doesn't hurt Americans that have been living their life the way they've been living their life and living at this job, the way they've been living, going to these jobs and going driving down that same street their whole life. If they wanted to live in a city that had a million illegal immigrants, wouldn't they have moved to a city that was like that? I'm sorry the intro is long. Tell me what I'm wrong about. Poor people don't care if they lose shit. Why would they? They're victims. They get to cipher and suck the economy dry. And someone will always feel sorry for them and help them. And everyone else has to actually pay for shit. So why would they care if 20, 30, just throw them in with the other piles of people who are poor coming to this country, living in this country? Because at the end of the day, they're not losing anything. You ever seen a person lose things? And people say, you get another car, you get this, this, this. you're not going to get your time and your years back. You're not going to get your the, the frustrating moments back. You're not going to get that peace back. So what? why would a poor person care? They wouldn't. That's what this about is about. That's what this is about. Why would Kamala care? The woman now is at a level in her life where she always was. When did Kamala ever struggle as a middle-class American working lower, lower wage jobs to try to get ahead? When? People can say, we can say the same thing for Trump. But the difference is, is that when you work for a business, he's a business person. Any mistake you make in business, it bites you. Any mistake she makes in government, they just take and snatch from us. They're stealing our money and resources to give to people that shouldn't be here. Let them and their government, and I know in the world that we're living in, people see that as a, a, a heartless thing. It's so heartless to say people can just suffer in their land. Okay, if we're gonna bring them here, why did we dump them in the Ohio, Springfield? Jeanette, I'm wrong. Why did we take these people and put them in Ohio? Was it because their population was no low? No. It was because this special case, these two special individuals, Kamala and Joe, knew that they were going to be the path of least resistance. Ohio residents are vulnerable. There's vulnerability that's there. They knew that these people would react this way. You get played over and over again, Black folks, and a lot of people in media and crazy white liberals that watch my channel. You get done over again and again because you can't see when you're being played. Can I get some hearts if, you, if you're watching and you know what I'm talking? They knew this was going to be the reaction. It's any natural reaction if you're living in this town with like a very low... You know that there's a stark difference if you've ever even just traveled between a big town and a small town. You know where they should have went and dropped all these Haitians since skin color is the number one factor? Atlanta. Why they didn't drop these people into Atlanta? If Race is everything, if color is everything, if color, color this and color that and blacky whitey, blacky whitey is everything. Why they didn't drop these black people then? Since y'all claim them, y'all will claim them, but you take it behind that Haiti, they ain't gonna claim you. They can call you an American. Why they didn't drop them off in Atlanta? 
That would have been the perfect solution if it was going to be about race. So my intro into that brings me to the next point here. At the White House, President Joe Biden urged the attacks on the Haitians community to cease. Attacks. You know why they had to do this too? It, it is like literally hitting me, guys. They decided to do this too because black people are no longer worried about if Barack Obama had a son, he would look like Trayvon. Democrats can't keep pulling that same scam again and again and again. It's police brutality. It's this, it's that. Police do be shooting you and me. Let me show it to them, guys. Too many people like my channel and other channels have been showing people the reality of what is actually happening with Black lives. And when we've shown them this reality, they can no longer cry about police brutality when 99.9999% of these deaths on the gun memorial were 100% preventable. And it is at the hands of black men that black men are dying the most. No one's fooled over here. To the point where if you wanted to live in a black community in most cities, it's too dangerous. So since Kamala can't go that route, they can't find another George Floyd or another Trayvon. They tried to go the route with, I forget the young woman's name that died at the hands of the police officer, even though she attempted and dared him and said she was gonna throw a, a boiling pot of hot water on the man. And because that didn't go viral, they had to dump these people in a community where they've been suffering. Imagine you have a car, you bought your vehicle, you have insurance, and then 20, 40, 1,000, however many people come get dumped into your city and they run into your car. They ram into your house. And they're not liable for any of the damages. That is complete irresponsibility on their government's part. Okay, guys? It's not about cats and dogs. Yes, they are. Hold on. I bet you Google will try to get rid of it right quick. Yes, it, yes, they, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Here is an article from, so stop talking about what you don't know about. That's annoying. Educate yourself. Guys, they be making me so mad. How they'll sit up on internet with all the internet in the world and still be dumb. Here's an article from Reddit. Now this article, as you can see on the screen, was written 12 years ago. They be making me so mad, guys, that they fall for the bullshit every four years again and again and again and again. Why, Jeanette, why didn't they take them to Atlanta so they could be around black people? Because it's about blackness. Why didn't they take these people and drop them off in Atlanta? Why did they try to take them to one of the poorest regions, poorest states, lowest populated states with the most white folks? Duh. So they could create drama and trauma. So in the article that you're looking at through Reddit from 12 years ago, someone went to Haiti and was served stewed cat. And they said, since they were willing to try it out, 
that they could confirm that the meat was delicious. This isn't a screen, this isn't something I made up. I didn't make it up. Okay. And since everything, Google, Microsoft, and all of that stuff is so heavily entangled with one another, all of these corporations are so he heavily entangled with one another. And they know that we've been using Google and stuff like this for fact checking for, especially on my channel, like six years. They've been changing a lot of the stuff in Google. Things I used to be able to find, I can't find anymore. Okay, like when I was covering the Lauren London Nipsey Hustle stuff, I can't hardly find a lot of that information anymore. Because they know that when we do these videos, it is a forever video that people can watch. And it has the power to help people open their eyes. And a lot of times we get shadow banned. I remember if you was a Trump supporter, maybe four years ago, your whole channel got shadow banned. And that's why you see we can go live and we don't eat majority of my 70 something thousand subscribers don't even get notifications in general because it's they're suppressing information. With this information, you're telling me that this random person that we never had no Haitian gate, Ohio gate is lying, Sonia Massey. You're telling me that this person made this up 12 years ago to just beat up on Haitian people when it, it was literally a positive post? No way you're going to tell me that. Okay, it's no way. So yes, they do eat cats. You don't have to, th so, you need, so now instead of just saying, oh yeah, they eat cats, we got to say they eat cats, dogs, lizards, frogs, who cares? We're spe we were, they were specifically talking about cats and y'all took that story and ran with it. So let's go to this next part of my video I want to talk about. Ain't no way in the world, I live in Texas, that there's 11.3 million illegal immigrants. There are 20 plus million illegal immigrants in America. In Houston alone, you got at least 2 million. In San Antonio alone, you have at least to a, a million, half a million. You're not finna sit up and tell nobody that this isn't facts, guys. Cause somebody who knows what a million people look like being from one of the biggest cities in America, there's no way we y'all can't tell us what numbers we're seeing here. You can't undo seeing people driving the wrong way on the freeway. You can't unsee it. You cannot see people that freshly got here in a vehicle driving across eight lanes. You can't undo it. They're trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that in every city that you've lived in where they have allowed massive, massive amounts of people with completely different mindsets, completely different cultures, completely different thought patterns, and drop these people off in your cities that you don't see what you think you're seeing. There's no way. And I'm in a border state, the border state to Mexico, Texas. This Yale study is finding that twice as many undocumented immigrants as previous estimates, which we knew that. Generally accepted estimates put the population of undocumented immigrants, which are illegal aliens. It, it was a time you didn't have to say undocumented. Why are we saying undocumented? Illegal, illegally here, illegal, illegally here, illegally here. Come on, guys. A new st Now you have to be so nice while getting run over. A new study using mathematical modeling on a range of demographics and immigration operations data suggests that the actual undocumented immigration population is more than 22 million people. Y'all are wondering what happened to the economy? Think about this. What happened to the economy in America today? All of these jobs that teenagers 
entry level jobs that teenagers used to occupy. I'll even go up one step further. Like I told my daughter the other day, someone at my age shouldn't have to work DoorDash or shouldn't be even thinking about door dashing or grubber hubbing or whatever. That was an entry. The pizza boy used to be a guy who was putting himself through college and he tended to be between the ages of 16 and 25 at the eldest. Do y'all remember some of the first delivery food services? Can I get some hearts and likes and whatever? That the pizza boy used to be putting himself through university and this guy used to be between the ages of 16 and 25 we have normalized dysfunction now this guy doesn't exist the person is coming to deliver your pizza your food your tacos is now an undocumented person that's not supposed to even be on that app because you're looking at our economy is being drained to death. These are entry level positions for teenage drivers, teenagers up into very young adulthood. And from young adulthood, our young people graduate and then they take their degree and they enter into the workforce. Now we don't have th those basic barriers of entry anymore. Because don't you think dumping 22 million people in any city, any country could wreak havoc on its financial system. These are, these are entry level positions that young Americans occupy to get ahead. I had an uncle, I still have an uncle. His first job was McDonald's. Now, mind you, this is like the eighties or something, right? She threatened that guy with hot water. Okay, she may have been uh, suffering from something mental and another crumbling thing about America because we've given these people trillions of dollars to come to our country and suck our economy dry is our mental health institutions have not been there. They've closed. Look at history, guys. I used to work for a Butler Hospital in Rhode Island. It was a mental health institution. And what I'm not going to do is give that woman a platform on my stuff anyways. I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care what happened to Sonia Massey because tragedies and bad things happen to people every day. And I don't need white liberals to tell me what I need to care about in life. I'm sorry. If it's a pecking order that I have to choose between, I'm sorry, Sonia Massey isn't as important to me as 22 million un illegal immigrants in this country. I, I, I'm sorry on a poll of what's important in life. I can't chase down every tragedy in life. Just like if something was to happen to me, it's a story that may or may, may come and go like that. In the world of significance, I'm not that significant. But in a world of numbers, I'm concerned about the massive amounts of pain over one person's pain. Because in a civilized society, you care about the mass. And you have to leave family members and the judicial system to worry about that individual. Because y'all are the same women. Y'all don't care about the massive amounts of black women on the, in this country that are being unalived every single day because the perpetrator doesn't fit the narrative. Okay? We go search. We look at women. Y'all do not care about the massive amounts of black women that are being murdered in this country every single day because the perpetrator doesn't fit the narrative. So y'all don't care about that. You don't care about Jalen Esterling. You don't care about her. You don't care about Michelle's Fowler. You don't care about Denise. You don't care about Dan Braille. We just, I'm just cherry picking and speaking specifically about black women, not because I don't care about every other woman on here. 
But y'all, why y'all don't why why y'all not marching for these women? Because the perpetrator doesn't fit a narrative. Y'all don't do any research. Whatever white liberals and Kamala and Biden and Obama and Michelle tell you to, oh, I'm sorry, and Hillary and Bill tell you to feel and think, that's what you put your energy into. Y'all don't care about all the opportunity that's been lost for black women like Laquana Lang. Why don't they care about this stuff, guys? Why? Why don't they care about the massive amounts of opportunity that has been stolen? And guess what's crazier? You know what's crazy? It's crazy when people bust down the American border door and we literally hand them our life. Who does that? You can have my house and my car. You need it more than me. <laughs> Come on, guys. Again, it's because we've been fed that being that selfless and being a giver, 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 giver pays off, and it doesn't. No one thinks like that. If I'm giving away everything I have, what am I going to have left? Like, how does that work? If my taxpayer dollars are being stolen from me, what am I going to have left? That's called self-preservation. I don't have anything to give if my bucket is empty. And y'all get mad when you see Americans think like that because everybody's tried to make us feel bad because of the country we live in, the country we were born in, the privilege that we have. We understand this privilege. Again, that doesn't mean that we want to just give it all away to everybody else because no, no person with any sense of self-esteem thinks like that. Okay, guys, all of it comes back to bad self-esteem. We want to see people come to the country and assimilate into our culture. We like to have things. We like to work to have things. You know, I remember when it used to be when you lived in a neighborhood and you had a house in a neighborhood, it's little stuff. You, everybody would wake up on the weekends and they would go and they would clean their yard, mow their lawn. I don't even see, people don't even do that no more. They would go to the hardware store. They would go to the grocery store. They would wash their car in their yard. They would park their cars in the yard. If the cars wasn't parked in the yard, I remember when it used to be a chore, guys, Y'all remember this? It used to be a chore for your brother or a family member to pull the car into the garage. You go into any really nice neighborhood where you got to pay $300,000 in a border state and you can't even drive in the street anymore. These people are parked car for car for car for car for car for car all in the street. You can't get it. And then you're trying to drive around a car. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to duck behind this car and let this person buy. they going 199 miles an hour to get past you and all the millions of cars that's on the road. Again, we're looking at culture and lifestyle. That's a frustration for someone who grew up with certain lifestyles. If you don't remember, I remember Okay. One thing, unfortunately, about a lot of Americans is they're not going to get it till the boogeyman is banging down their door. They're not feeling the grip or in some cases, and it's, that's really sad. They don't remember a time when things were a certain type of way. Did we have crime? Of course we had crime. Did we have hard times? Of course we had hard times. But these are some times, guys, we have not seen, okay? We have not seen. 
And it has changed the dynamic of the lifestyle that we have been living in this country forever. It used to be that if you had goals and dreams that you wanted to hit, you could very easily hit them. There was a path to get there and we have lost that. I look, I, me and my daughter, we go look at houses and stuff in neighborhoods and we're like, oh, let's go over there. You look at Google, you're like, hmm, Google, Google the house. They take these angles and pictures of the house. No, for some reason, they found the one day five years ago when there was no cars on the street. And I said, hey, let's get in the car, go look at that neighborhood. Let's go look at that. We get over to the neighborhood, it's like, what is going on here? That's how these people in Ohio are looking at this crazy amount of people. You a veteran, so you're, you, you already lived your best life, but you don't care if our kids get their best life. If you a veteran, you already done been there and done that and lived your best life. What about the next generation? Save it. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm glad you're a veteran. I, I'm grateful for the service. But can somebody else have something coming up? Can my kids, kids have something left? Can we not just give everything away that you work for? You explain to me why someone who hasn't worked for this country, hasn't bled for this country, should come to this country and get the benefits you got that you earned. I don't know what they call the, the, the medals that you've earned, the stripes that you've earned, the veteran status that you've so you're telling me we don't get to put their face to the concrete and make them go through drills. They don't have to go through boot camp. But you're telling me that in one year, six months, two weeks, they get all the benefits you worked for? I do you one better. Open up your house, build an Airbnb, or build. I'm, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking from that. Build something, and you should house with your money, your direct income. You should house these people when they come to this country. And at all times of the year, the holidays and everything, because we're um, taxpayers are never off the hook to take care of these people. We don't get to just take care of them for six months or three months. I have no idea of the sacrifice. Of course I do. I come from a cop family. I have relatives that were that were in a service. Why do you think I don't know that? Why would you think I don't know that? I've had to tax my taxes. Almost 50% of my money go to taxes. Why would... Here's the point of the video. Why would I give that away to someone who did not earn it? Why? Charity, we have charities. We have foreign aid. We have relief. We have men and women that have been serving in these countries, these third world countries, giving aid to people, loving on people, fighting for people, Americans have lost their lives for people in other countries that didn't benefit America. So this is just common sense reasoning here. I'm not asking you and asking Americans to literally just throw these people away. I'm saying that if you look at the method at which these people, this special AKA, Kamala, a.k.a. Alpha Kappa Alpha Alpha, has done this to Ohio, it is with a purpose. I said that if being Black, and it's a racism issue for the Haitians, my question, why didn't we, because you may have missed this part of the video, 
why didn't we go and put these people in Atlanta, a predominantly black place? Why didn't we take them to Alabama? Why did they dump? And when I say dump, it's because the people don't speak English. Most of them didn't come with a lot of resources, but their goodwill to work. Why didn't we, why didn't we put the Venezuelan Americans or these other, Amer other groups in Ohio and put the Haitians in Atlanta? Why did we drop off the Haitians in a very poor place like Ohio? I'm an insurance agent, broker. So I used to have clients in Ohio. So why we put them in Ohio, one of the whitest places in the world? What, what were we trying to do here? Punish them for what? They're living their life. If they wanted diversity, if they wanted to be around a, a bunch of new people, they would have moved. If they wanted their house values or whatever to tank or whatever, it wouldn't have. It actually wouldn't have. If they wanted to be run off the road and they wanted to live in a city with 3 million people, 5 million people, 8 million, 10 million, uh, New York, they would have moved there. You're getting played. I said it earlier in the video if you weren't here. You're getting played. Wait a minute. You're being toyed with. And they're depending on the bleeding heart Americans like you to give everything that we've worked for away. And your girl Kamala, she's a labor candidate. Kamala wants to replace you with AI. Kamala has a deal with India right now that you don't know about. Her deal with India, as I'm gonna unpack in the next video, is about taking quantum computing and AI and replacing American workers because that is the reason why Microsoft, Amazon, and quite a few other corporations have given Kamala three million plus dollars. She has deep pockets in tech. She has deep pockets in that realm. They are paying her to hire many of their youth that they don't have any jobs. They don't have any companies in India. Right now they're going through a dramatic turnaround because most of their labor force that are young people that are in tech don't have jobs. But if you understand your girl is global, you are local, she's global. In order for my daughter, Caitlin, to get ahead in this country, she has to think globally. You're thinking locally. Maybe you're thinking statewide. Maybe you're thinking nation, nationally within this one country. Your girl is doing striking deals globally. Your girl just let 20 something thousand illegal Chinese men. Hold on, I'll show it to them. In California. Why is she doing that? What, what, what are we doing here, guys? Okay. Why is, she, okay, here it is. I'll show it to you. The number of migrants arriving at the southern border is unprecedented. Last year, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection had a record, and this is CBS. CBS is not biased news for, this is not a Fox, Fox News report here. She's thinking globally. She's thinking on a global scale. The number of migrants arriving at the southern border has been unprecedented. Last year, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection recorded two and a half million instances of detaining or turning away people attempting to cross into the United States. So what's the fastest growing among them? Chinese immigrants. 
have a heart, have a heart. She, they want us to have a heart and you can't have a heart with that reason. Now, yes, you heard that right. Chinese, we saw large groups, including many of the middle class come through a four foot gap at the end of the border fence, 60 miles east of San Diego. Have a heart. These men are wearing polo, Nike. They got Versace shades. They've been living in hotels. They travel like four countries. They traveled with their own money. They paid the cartel $30,000 a pop. We got American citizens that don't even make $30,000 a year right now. And right now, American citizens that used to have $10,000 saved, which I have it on my channel right now. I have all the economic videos and the people that can't find jobs and the people that live in check to check and being evicted. And I mean, I'm, I'm working on a video right now about them living in hotels. I'm pulling the videos. And you mean to tell me that these men, these Chinese men, then paid the cartel $30,000 a pop to come here? Why? For job opportunities? Seems to me they have some money somewhere. Why are they coming here? The illegal entryway is a new route for those hoping to live in America. I'm pausing this because that thing just moving is irritating. We were surprised to see the number of people coming through the China, through from China, were nearly 7,000 miles away. Our cameras and at one point, this armed border patrol agent standing 25 feet away did not deter them. This man, a college graduate, told us he hoped to find work in Los Angeles. He said his trip from China took 40 days. This is about Haitians eating dogs and cats. No, nothing to spend all my energy on cats and dogs and Haitians. No, I'm trying to show you the global agenda that's going to benefit her. What countries did you go through? The college graduate said he went to Thailand, Morocco, Ecuador, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, and Nicaragua. 30 minutes later, a smuggler an SUV of an SUV, with an SUV raced along the border fence and dropped another group off at the same spot. 30 minutes later, after that, another group. Over a four-day period, they witnessed 600 illegals, adults, and children pass through that area. We saw people from India, Vietnam, Afghanistan. Many of these Chinese immigrants, I mean illegals, who came through will end up asking for political asylum. This is what bleeding heart Americans have brought to the country? You, what happens if you go to their country and do this? What happens if you go to their country and you do this? Didn't a man in the Congo just have his own son killed for trying to have a political coup in the Congo? The gap is global destination littered with travel documents from around the world. They're just rushing our border at this point. And who's going to put, and if your girl is in office right now and she's not putting a stop to this, who will? So Kamala Miss AKA don't know this is happening? That's not making any sense.
Ain't no way in the world you're telling me Kamala don't know that this is happening. Are you sitting here telling me, Mr. Veteran, that the, your girl Kamala don't know this is happening? As educated as she is, she doesn't know that this is happening. Some of the migrants made a grueling journey through Central America with dusty backpacks, but we noticed middle-class migrants from China arriving with rolling bags. They didn't came in from class. They would roll their bag on in here through the dirt. They told us they took flights all the way to Mexico. Some flew from China to Ecuador because it doesn't require a visa for Chinese nationals. Then took flights to Tijuana, Mexico. The migrants told us they connected with smugglers or what they call snakeheads in Tijuana. AKA, mm, mm, AKA, mm. where's Kamala at? Kam yeah, Kamala, what, girl? What are we doing here? I thought that they still was grippling with the virus. We're not even testing these people. They just rolling up in here, huh? They paid them about $400 for the long ride drive. The I'm going to give you all this because they're going to say, you've been skipping stuff. Yeah, because I don't want to read the entire article, but I'll give it to you. So they wanted to know, what do you do for a living in China? The translator speaking English, she worked in a factory, but now it's hard to find that factory work. So you have your poor ones. So they come into a factory near you to take another job that we don't have anyways. That does that math is not mathing. And then she said, they said, well, wasn't this trip very expensive? And then the female illegal immigrant said, yeah. She said it was. And then she sold her house to cover the $14,000 cost of her trip to the U.S. So she had a whole house that she could have stayed at. Last year, U.S. Customs and Border Protection reported 37,000 Chinese citizens were apprehended crossing illegally from Mexico into the U.S. That's 50 times more than the past two years earlier. Many of the migrants told us that they made the journey to escape China's increasingly repressive political climate and sluggish economy. The third, the 37 year old woman said China's COVID crackdown lockdown destroyed her childcare business. She left her two young children and family at the house. She left them in China. And why did you decide to come to the United States? 37 year old female illegal immigrant said many reasons. What a, can, can we elaborate? No. Kamala, can you go ask this girl to elaborate? For for work or the 37-year-old illegal immigrant said, no, not entirely. No, not entirely. What is she carrying in that backpack? The 30 <laughs> she said freedom was one of her reasons, freedom. We wondered how all of these migrants knew about the particular entryway into California. The answer was in their hands. Tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. You know, come a wa star. I just have to do y'all like that because no matter how serious I be trying to tell y'all how serious the stuff is, y'all some some of y'all mm, a connect osegu a kama wa star 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 star. I mean, your girl did she have Megan the Stallion butt half butt naked with a tie on, looking like she's about to jump up there and start stripping? A connect Ose, I can't take her seriously. I can't. Y'all talking about cats and dogs. I can't take. Kamala seriously. Her idea of appealing to black women 
was to put Megan Thee Stallion on there. And Megan Thee Stallion is canceled for good, forever. Because she was booty butthole naked all over that video. That's another video. TikTok is that social media platform created in China. The post we found has step-by-step -step instructions for hiring smugglers and detailed directions to the hole that we visited. We were stuck by just how old, orderly and retune, retune it all seemed. Zanet Osegu, whatever they're saying, whatever he's, he's saying on there. The migrants walked about a half a mile down a dirt road and waited for the line for the U.S. border patrol to arrive so they could surrender. You know why? Because it's called catch. Then they have so much time to try to hold them and then released. Catch and release. They get given a piece of paper. They're supposed to show up to court on a certain particular day, which is usually like five years later. And five years later, out of a hundred people that were given that piece of paper to go to court, how many do you think actually show up to court? Um, not many. <laughs> Y'all be making me work on these videos, man. I get so passionate about the fact that my family members, your family members, we have worked so hard in this country and we can't get houses, many of us, some of us can't get houses. And we literally are just gonna give a Venezuelan family that worked under the table in this country a house? For what? They were given, they were given, they were given their status legally. They skipped the line, friend. That's how they became legal. Because I already looked the document up, friend. I looked the document up. Okay. I didn't feel like going through that whole document, but I will. Here it is. Hold on. Haitians. Haitians. Granted. I looked it up before I started the video. Citizenship. Oops. Oh, I get it. Okay. Let me find it. Hold on. A child born to a Haitian mother and father, regardless of where they were born, this is because most parents be native, naturalized citizens, legitimized, legitimized, or illegal, Ill illegitimate children legally recognized by a Haitian father, and on, so on and so forth. But they help them skip the line to get the paperwork they needed, folks. They're not focused on them people coming here. We've been crying in Texas and Houston and Texas for 50 years about people jumping the border. We've been talking about this for years, guys. We talked about it forever. We did. People have whole political channels about this. Like again and again, like where were, you know what? It wasn't that nobody, that everybody's focusing on Haitians. Y'all never cared about Mexican immigrants. Y'all never cared about uh, uh, Salvadorians and, and, and Venezuelan. Y'all didn't care about that. That's why y'all are, y'all are focused on skin color. I'm focused on lifestyle. Y'all are focused on skin color because if you have the same aligned values, things that you want, ways that I don't focus on skin color because black people are dangerous as hell. Here's a gun memorial to prove it. I don't focus on skin color because I can't even live in black neighborhoods because black people and black men are deadly dangerous. Black men are the most dangerous creatures walking the face of the earth. <laughs> Y'all get mad if you want to. Y'all are worried about skin color. That's what y'all are worried about. When African people come to America, they don't look for black people neighborhoods to go move to. If you black, if you African, can y'all tell them what I'm talking about in the comments? They don't want to live in a hood. 
They don't want to live in the slums. They don't want to live in the ghetto. They don't want to live over there. When my daughter and I lived in Sugarland for the better part of year before last, she was still in school. African people lived in Sugarland, Houston. They didn't want to live in Sunnyside. They didn't want to live in Guns Point. They was living in their best life in nice neighborhoods. They lived in Richmond, Texas, which is right outside of Sugarland. They came to this country. They don't. They didn't see themselves as black. They said we're African and we're here. I'm sorry, we're here, and you niggas in America is right here. They didn't, they, they're not using skin color politics. I don't even like to say racial po politics anymore. Y'all are using skin color politics. They don't use skin color politics because I know some Dominicans. I know some Puerto Ricans. I know some Cardi B's that are way darker than black people I know. And they don't think of themselves as black. They're here and black people in America are right here. And that is primarily because black men don't go to universities in droves and they don't occupy positions of power. And so, yeah, it's a class system. Hello. They don't, they, they ain't work. Who, who, who blueberry black? They don't care about that. They don't care about that. I wonder why they're focusing on the Haitians. No, because other people that come to this country that are fairly educated, they come here and they surpass the hood and nobody's worried about them, thinking about them. In fact, when my daughter was going to pretty much an all Indian and all African school in Sugarland, her high school, they were asking her if she was African because they thought so piss poor about black Americans. And these were primarily Indian and Africans asking her if she was African. Her friends were African. Her friends were Indian. Same thing in the Woodlands. Now the Woodlands was a lot more diverse, but Sugarland High School, Clemens High School. Okay, I don't even know who you're talking about. No Lauren. Who the hell knows who Laura Loomer is? Who cares? Who is she? Who who, who would care? No one would care. No one would care because unless she's running for president right now in this economy, in this society that we're living in, she's an irrelevant factor in my life. <laughs> I know that when Trump was in office before, what the political climate looked like. And for Putin to sit up and say that he is supporting Kamala Harris that should ring off the alarm for most Americans that are politically inclined in this country. That should terrify them. So yeah, Africans, you, you trying to distract me from talking about Africans coming here? They don't like black people. I sat up and had to debate three Africans by myself, not even three years ago, not even two years ago. And we talked about everything that was America and everything there was education and everything there was other countries. I sat by myself and we all sat and talked and we talked about black Americans and Africans because they're not the same and they don't see themselves as the same. They don't say, you my brother, my tutu. No, they were debating me like I was talking to white folks. Okay, they wasn't worried about skin color. In fact, I'm the other. It's them, and then there's me, I'm black. There's, there's, there's the hierarchy here. It's the white man, so that we can get into the corporation. It's the Indian man and the African man. It's the, I'm sorry, it's the Indian man, the Asian man, depending on what field they wanna be in, techni technical fields, accounting, lawyer, doctor, architect, which they don't do that that much no more because that fits into the art category. And then guess what, guys? 
Then it's the Mexican because they are great at service workers. And then niggas. <laughs> let me let me say it again. In any society you living in, in any productive city that's a big major city, and you have a group, groups and groups and group of people. Same thing in, in uh, Frisco, same thing in Sugar Land, same thing in Rich everywhere. You have, oh, I'm sorry, there's even classes within white. You had a white man. He facilitates the corporation in America. They don't want to go work for mom and pops. They don't work at fast food. They predominantly don't do these things. Don't come in my comments, cherry picking, talking about you, the one African that worked at Wendy's. Fine. But when they come here in STEM professions, white man facilitates corporations, Indian man, Asian man, African man works these corporations. The white women work the administrative stuff. And then niggas are somewhere in there somewhere. They don't see you. Oh, black Americans, we like them. Like, you know, they one of us. Power to the people. Nah, they're not, they're not on that. They're not on that. The only way you can sit at a table with them and talk to them is if at the end of the day, you're trying to pursue something educationally that makes sense to them. If you're trying to go and be an entertainer, fooey. If you're trying to go, they don't even want to be nurses like that no more. They, not, they will settle for being a nurse as an entryway to try to be a doctor or something like that. I know how are black, how are black people, we travel people, we the most educated group, black women. How are we not seeing this? Because none of these people are trying to sit at the table with us, guys. They're not. They're not. They're not sitting here talking about race. It's a social construct. Your money trumps your race in this country. Having resources, having power, so mostly starts with money, produces resources. Money and resources combined, depending on how you build with it, wealth. Then power. Power sometimes will come first, depending on where you come from. If you do not have power, then you don't have economics. Then, of course, you're not going to have resources if you don't have economics. You don't have money. Then you ain't going to have no resources. In their mind, what can I do with you? You can't give me a position or a job. This is why bringing millions and millions and millions of low-wage workers into an economy is catastrophic. It brings us back to the beginning of the video. Okay, these are just, I'm a very strongly opinionated person. And I've been versed enough to be around people to know what they're thinking, how they're thinking, and why they're thinking it. Black people are dogs in this country because we don't have any power, we don't have any economic power, we don't own anything, and we're at least married. So we, that means we have, at least from an onlooker standpoint, no morals. We have no collective morals. We have no collective resources. The only thing that we can do is build with the people that are in our circle. That doesn't mean that that's going to be a family member or, or someone who's black. All we can do is have micro communities that we build with. Whether it be working networks, a community of black women get together to give to a black woman to help a black woman get ahead because black men don't typically really do that. Most black men that give to black women, it's an invested interest in himself. And that's not community. The Indian community can give to Indians or South Asians just because they're South Asian. We as a community collectively have no bargaining power in this country. Go and take a look at Yvette Carnell, one of my favorite YouTubers. Yvette talks about Ados a lot. 
Y'all think it's just about me just jumping on a, a Trump chain train because it gets views? No, I got shadow banned for talking about Trump years ago. And that was when no one was making money doing this. Now Americans are so desperate and now it's clicking. And now every black man on the planet is on YouTube talking about Trump. When y'all were literally giving me hell years ago about talking about Trump. What about Trayvon Martin? You know, we don't have any bargaining chips in this country. So black women, which we'll talk about another day, we have to divest. Who is this guy? Tariq Hill, who cares? Let me see this. I already know where this is going. Okay, who, who, what, when? Tariq Hill, an officer was detained him. So what? That's the same song and dance. How many times are they gonna do this same jig and black people come follow? <sighs> if I had a song, he would look like Trayvon. That's what Barack Obama said. If he had a son, his son would look like Trayvon. But would he act like Trayvon did? No. He wouldn't even be in the same neighborhood. If Barack Obama had a son that looked like Trayvon, he wouldn't have had to go to live at his dad's house because he was giving his mom utter hell, skipping school, and then his dad didn't even tell the homeowners association that Trayvon was going to be there. Then Jay-Z came back and made a documentary and made crazy amounts of money on y'all's plight. I should do a separate video about veterans in what regard. Trump is acting a fool and creating many crimes. Y'all say y'all don't care if Kamala is black or not. I mean, y'all say that Kamala's black and that's the, the merit of which most people want to vote for her. She doesn't have one economic policy. She said it herself that she would never have a policy that just benefits black people. Although she's had policies, policies that benefited Asian Americans. She got a 2013 reward from La Raza. You know who La Raza is in California? La Raza? Does La Raza sound like that's something for black folks? Trump is about his money, guys. And I'm sorry. I throw race right out the window when my money is at stake. <laughs> I never base anything that I do about race. Because I don't see no thriving black community. I see a black community on um, life support. So, so why would I be worried about life support? Because somebody going to pull the plug any day. Okay. That guy got seven baby mamas, so he all over the place. And he don't care about black people if it's based on blackness. Black people want to adopt her so bad. I don't know. Because they, like I said in my other video, they're worried about representation. They will go to hell over representation. Representation is about their self-esteem. See, when you start to really peel back the layers on why the collective of some black people make these decisions, most black people make these decisions when it comes to who they want to put in office, it's about ego and feelings. How do I feel about looking at Trump's face? I don't like Trump's face. It's an unattractive face. He's a white guy, white enough, white passing, whatever you want to say. The, real, the reality is, is that many of these people are basing their decisions based on feelings. They're not thinking about the globe and the world politics that's at play here. They're not, no, not understanding that Kamala is a divester. A divester's best interest. Um, the real McCoy, tell him. Tell him how I operate. <laughs> right, guys? I operate on self-interest because collectivism within our community is dead. We don't, we don't have a community. We have black people that live over here and black people that live over there and every which where. That's our community. 
tell him the real McCoy. If if something does not serve me, I do not serve it. That's why I don't go to black churches. I believe in God and Christ, but I do not go to black churches. I'm not fin to keep on feeding into a system where the only, the preacher himself will not chastise black men for marrying the least. And when they marry the most, they marry when they broke. That's a problem. So now they become someone else's burden. We're talking about collectivism here. We're not talking about cherry picking the best black man you ever knew in your life. We're not going to do that because that's not going to work for the majority of black people anyways. Right. So that's the that's why when Africans, no matter where they could come from dirt, and when they come to this country, they're like, you black. Goodbye. <laughs> You African, what you are? You emu? Point me in the direction of the community center. You ain't got to worry about the community. How many African community centers you seen got shot up on MLK Boulevard? None. <laughs> How many Taiwanese? How many Taiwanese community centers you can get towed up from the floor up by Taiwanese people? None. They're like top five, right? They make they, they make top five money in America. How many Native Indian? Pour it up, pour it up. Leave y'all's comments below. I said what I was gonna say. I'm gonna get out here. Tell me what. Listen, it's 22 million undocumented illegal immigrants in America. What do you really think that's doing to the economy? Put aside race, put aside color, it's a construct anyways. In years, race, color is not going to matter. Have y'all seen Hunger Games? People go, that's just, a, that's just a movie. Have you seen Hunger Games? You could be the most beautiful person but if you're living in poverty, you're worthless to the society. God doesn't say that, but people are here and then people are here. You don't have hit middle ground. You don't have middle class. The whole thing with this Kamala, Kamala, I forget whatever her middle Indian name is, is about destroying middle class. Once you destroy middle class, people at the bottom have nothing to strive for, and people at the top barely want to give anything anyways. People at the top cannot depend on poor class. Poor people are all over the place. You know, they're not steady. Your middle class is your strong base. You essentially can become Venezuela, right? And that's why these people are escaping from Haiti and all these places. Some people got other reasons on why they think they, lo they love ha Haiti, but hey, you either here or here. There won't be that many in betweens. And if we keep giving up, keep being bleeding hard, oh my heart, we have organizations to help people. We've been doing it for a hundred plus years. We, you cannot legislate choices. I tell my daughter this all the time. One person see the, the glass as half full. Another person see the glass as half empty. And we all got 24 hours in a day. One person, it don't matter if you give them millions of dollars, their mindset is they're going to spend their 24 hours this, doing this. Another person is, you give me a million dollars, I'm going to multiply, 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 multiply. First, I'm going to network and go find people that are about what I'm trying to do, whatever I know my purpose to be. A poor person just squanders the money. That's why as much as we talk about stuff and we talk about color doesn't cash out. I should start a color doesn't cash out series. Color don't cash out. What does, what? So you woke up black. I woke up black. Did you get paid to wake up black today? Right? No. Well, white people, they wake up, they get paid. No. They they have 
They have weaponized their numbers. They have fought you on multiple levels and you have lost as a collective group, black people. When black men make the most money in this country, they marry black women the least. If that ain't a hell of a, 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 a psychological fight that they won, I don't know what is. Again, when black men make money, they bring the money back to their own community the least. The richest person today is the Asian woman. She's the richest. And the Asian dollar circulates in his own community over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Black men who have the least to offer educationally, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and financially marry the most. It's like, and I'm not trying to be funny, I'm not. The only simplest analogy is, is, if uh, uh, the black man that has a small head gets married the least to black women and the black man that has a big, huge head, alien looking head, marries black women the most and he's poor, living in abject poverty with no education. It's a bunch of big headed black kids running around. <laughs> okay, I'm not being mean. I'm just putting it out there. That's why waking up black today didn't pay me. And if you want to win, you got to go with the winners. And they won. The white man won. Now the Indian man is about to win. Then the Asian man is about to win coming from China. The China, China man, China man, China man, Indian man is winning. They're just trying to weasel their way into our communities so they can win on a global scale. If they can't export billions of dollars of goods to Walmart that we buy, that we have money to buy, we're not buying right now. We ain't buying from Timu. We, we don't have it like that. Then the thing is, since instead of going to the back door and taking money, let's just go through the front door. Let's just import millions and millions of Chinese men to come to America and take over America. And you know why they're coming here too? because they have done this horrible thing to the women in their community. So now they don't have the numbers. They have an aging elderly population. Again, world economics is very important. We Every adult before they renew certain things should have to do world economics and pay attention to what's going on. You are cherry picking gray because you got your stuff from Timu, but I'm talking about globally. If Timu doesn't make a certain amount of money a day, we just using it as an example. Timu is winning anyways. I'm saying that when they realize they're hurting, they're gonna go to the country that's not hurting. Y'all gonna say, come on, come on, come on. Y'all did that with our communities. Y'all let all these people come in our communities, black communities, and push us out of there. You better go ask a Houston, Texas. If you had a union, you better thank them. <laughs> Isn't that what Kamala said? If you had a union, you better thank a union member. You better thank a union member. Y'all let all these people come in our communities because y'all was in a fight with the white man. Let me get off here. They're gonna be mad at me, guys. I don't wanna be dealing with them today. <laughs> you better think I you and your mom. Y'all let all these men come to the community and beat you out of your jobs. Outbid you. For one black man that wanted to make a decent living, you let the Mexican man come here and say, if he will do it for, um." If the black man want $30 an hour, I'll take 10 and I can get three of him. We're going to get three of him. Y'all can compete with that. Y'all could not compete with that. Because when the Mexican man came to America, he wasn't trying to be white. He didn't want to be the white man. 
He's thinking about the bigger picture. The Mexican man came here and he didn't want nobody to give him a piece of bread. He figured if he overpopulate, outpopulate, that he gonna win in the long game. You can't beat an army and you want soldier. So he's looking at the bigger picture. Population has been used as a form of warfare. You cannot fight an army of people and you don't have numbers. You may win the battle, but you will never take on and win the war. And while y'all are sitting here, we don't have time for Kamala's AI tactics right now. AI has taken up enough jobs already. But what India is working on right now, if you get out of your own booty crack and go look at global economics, India is looking at quantitative, looking at um, AI, and whatever Kamala talks about, because I have it in my video coming up, one of my videos. When we allowed our children to get left behind in math and science, the Indian six-year-old is out mathing the African-American high schooler. Because even though they may not even live to see the fruits of what they're building, they're doing it for the next Indian child that's gonna grow up. Again, group economics. They're both of them, both, I forget which one just overtook. I believe it's India. I believe India just overtook China's population by 4 billion or something recently, guys. Can you do you? Listen, Gray, come on, bro. Do you have any other, anything else you can type besides, type besides Trump? You have tunnel vision, which is why we lost the war, friend. Tunnel vision. Put that part of the conversation in a hack. We're talking about how India is fastly pacing through with AI. And now, now since AI has been released, that's what they're working on. So now you switch to the Harris bucket. It's bigger than Kamala Harris. Her mother taught her something. Loyalty to Indian culture. Indians, South Asians. Kamala is loyal to South Asia. We don't belong. I know it hurts. Your mama don't love you in my lots of voice. No, no, no. No, no. They're going to say I'm going crazy, y'all, because I'm just using these uh, references from TV. Oh, no, no. Thank you, Allie. Hey, Allie. Your mama don't love you. No. She got rid of you. That's not true. The reality is, is that Kamala is about Kamala. Kamala is about her mama's people. Period. She ain't never talked about Mr. Jamaican daddy, which Jamaican is not a race anyways. It's a nationality. She's on her mother's mission. Her mother was a cancer researcher, scientist. That's what her mother did. Her mother lost that battle. So Kamala's picking up the torch to uplift her people out of poverty. Kamala actually went with her dad. I mean, her granddad. She went with her granddad. I see... I don't just be talking about talking points that I see on. I go and look at things myself. So Kamala was in Africa with her grandfather when she was a child. And Mr. Gray, let me ask you this. Why did Kamala, since we're going to do a history lesson, why did Kamala go 
to what is it, Nambia? Why did Kamala go to Nambia with her grandfather, which was her mother's father? Why? You're looking at the dad. The, her father was a Marxist. Her mother was a scientist. Okay. And her grandfather was about labor. Labor. What was Kamala's running record when she was in California concerning labor? Every time she starts lying, she, her voice starts cracking. Do you notice that? No, to learn, no, because it wasn't her black grandfather. I mean, it wasn't her, it wasn't her Jamaican, her father's father. It was her mother's father. I have a lesson for you, Gray. I need you to go and take a look at why was Kamala in Nambia with her Indian South Asian grandfather? And what was he telling her? We'll rule the world one day. <laughs> she don't care about blackness. Never did. I'm not getting funny. I'm just trying to tell you because we get tunnel vision talking about Trump and versus Kamala. These two people are in different leagues. They have different agendas. Trump wants to be president. He want to win. It's probably not about money. Kamala's is not about money either because she wasn't poor in the first place. Kamala has a mission and until you figure out what that mission is, which I already know what the mission is because I've been looking into it, then you'll have your answer as to why she wants so badly to become president. She don't even have an agenda for us. She has no definitive win for you. Every person comes into power for reasons. Why am I hustling on YouTube? Money. And I enjoy talking about certain things like this. I enjoy a range of topics. That's why you will see me doing different types of videos. I really enjoyed our powwow the other night, ladies, about Tyrese, the sweet lady. Okay. Unemployment in, in India. Yep, thank you, Ali. I talked about it. Is eight, almost 10% of young Indians under the age of like 25, 30 are unemployed. She went to, because Kamala doesn't tell you detail, 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 details of her mission for South Asians. She doesn't tell you, she gives you just enough to be, because you know what? She doesn't give you no real meal. She take you through the fast food lane. She don't sit down and make masala with you. She doesn't sit down and say, we're going to go to the store. And here's the list of the ingredients. Here's the method by which we're going to cook this up. No, she says, you hungry? You want a burger? I give you some Meg the Stallion. You want a burger, Manisha? She sat down with that young lady at the Grio, which I have it. I have the, I have the footage. I'm going to give you the footage. She sat down with that young lady. Hold on. So they want they want to take me here, y'all. I didn't want to make this no two-hour live stream, but I will. Hold on. Let me go find her. She has no agenda for the black people. And again, they're so caught up because that's what media distracts you with. She don't want you to sit back and go, who is Kamala? Who is she as a person? What makes her wake up every day? What is her purpose? Does she want to be president because she just want to be president? Does she have some political agenda? Is she motivated by money? It could be a multitude of different things, right? Let me go back to my history. I hope I ain't got to go too far. And she she talked to the Grio, and you got to take a look at this woman's face expression when she was talking to Kamala and what Kamala said. It's a mess. So Kamala, the Grio. Watch this. 
Hey, 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 now. Let me go back over here and share my screen. And tell him to get off of here. She was washing some greens in the tub. And black people, my grandmama. Because all she needs to do is take you through and do symbolic type of stuff for you. And she knows how our people are. They're going to take that and they're going to run with it. So I'm going to minimize myself here. And here she is. I'm going to give it to you from five years ago. Y'all saw where I watched it, right? Because they say, she, you, pay, you didn't even see this. Yeah, I saw it right here. I'm about to show it to you. Back in 2022. I, I was already taking a look deeper into things that she was saying. You don't. Kamala has the same old rehearsed thing. So, Kamala, do you believe that the country's in a better place than it was five years ago? Mark my words. So, here's the thing. I grew up with a single mother who raised me. Same. Watch, watch. She's going to say it in an interview. All right? She's going to say it in an interview. Hold on. <laughs> agenda. One of the questions that we're raising about the economic. One of the questions. I'm so sorry. Y'all couldn't hear me. I'm so sorry. Kamala hates this question. Kamala, Kamala's whole body language changes when she hears this question. Watch it with me. Tell me if I might be wrong, but what I see is someone that cannot stand when anybody in her lifetime asks her this question. Now watch this, because I hope you I hope you see this, Gray that the black community has mm -hmm. is senator harris if you yeah. are elected president what would be your agenda for the black community right. we know that right. black americans are arrested at higher rates for that's marijuana right. we're denied mortgages when we uh, loans that's exactly for mortgages. Right. there's a, a wealth right. disparity so how do you that's help right. the black community from that's the right House? that's right well the first step is to understand that the needs of black folks are the needs of everyone and the needs of everyone are the needs of black folks. Gray, would you agree with that? Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. You know, black people are marginalized. We are last high, first five. You know, we go through economic uh, windfalls. We don't have the amount of wealth or any of those things, right, Kamala? Hold on, they didn't see my neck move, y'all. They don't take it seriously until they see the neck roll. Oh, that's right. 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 She wanted to cut her off and say, shut the F up, B. But she's Kamala and classy and she's AKA. AKA. So what she did was she was trying to get her to get past that point so she could say, first of all, here it is on the screen. The needs of black people is the needs of everyone. And the needs of everyone is the needs of black people. Would you agree? No. Most people wouldn't agree with that. Because we have unique situations and circumstances being in this country that no group has faced. Including Kamala. Including Kamala's mother including Kamala's daddy. So that's why she rushes this lady past this. She, she rushes Natasha Alford past this question because it's a di di because she's di being dismissive. She's on the griot for herself because she's a divester like me. She's doing this for herself. She's not doing it for her health. She's doing it for herself. And so herself is her health. So I guess it is herself. 
but she ain't doing it for Natasha, the black community. She don't want to talk about no black community. That's why she did this. I'm going to play it again. That the black community has mm -hmm. is Senator Harris, if you yeah. are elected president, what would be your agenda for the black community? Right. We know that right. black Americans are arrested at higher rates for That's marijuana. Right. We're denied mortgages when we uh, loans That's exactly for mortgages. Right. There's a, That's a wealth right. disparity. So how do you That's help right. the black community from That's the White right. House? That's right. Well, the first step is to understand that the needs of black folks are the needs of everyone and the needs of everyone are the needs of black folks. It is also equally important to understand that this is a country that had over 200 years of slavery. Here she go. <laughs> yeah, we, you know where we're going with this. It's a rehearsed playbook in her head. Had Jim Crow had legalized segregation and discrimination and now de facto segregation and discrimination. Yeah. And so while our needs are like everyone else's in terms of we want our babies to be born healthy and live a happy and productive life, we care about issues of climate change, we care about issues of national security. We also know that when you look at disparities. Now, Kamala, what black person do you know care about the needs of climate change? I just know that when I walk out my door, I see it raining. I grab my umbrella. I'm being funny, y'all. <laughs> I don't know no black people collectively that's thinking about climate change. My grandmother was a chain smoker. She wasn't thinking about no climate change. When the climate change, I change my shirt. When the climate change, I change my pants. I ain't thinking about no climate change. It's around wealth, around home ownership around education, around who is stopped, arrested, and incarcerated in this country. There are huge disparities based on race, and that has to be dealt with. So part of my proposal in terms of the agenda, specifically for Black folks, is about what we need to do, for example, around maternal mortality. I have actually spoken So Kamala, once all these black women can go back to either, because how are you worried about what black women are doing with with mortality rates when 75 plus percentage of black children are born out of wedlock, but you're doing everything in your power to reinstate massive amounts of abortion legislation? Hmm, interesting. Here we go, boy. Gray, you need to you need to have put that list up. You got your bullet points, CNN and all them people that told you about the Central Park Five. And 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 when when you gonna talk about Trayvon Martin? She's not thinking about our life. She's back to running about reproductive rights. She wants black women to abort these babies. These are my opinions about her thoughts. These are my opinions. If Kamala never see another black baby again, she wouldn't care. She doesn't see herself as black anyways. She doesn't care about stuff like that. She doesn't care if you have food to eat. Kamala cares about everybody else. AI, quantum computing. That's what she said in the, the uh, transcript of the debate. She came out of nowhere and talked about quantum computing and AI. Quantum computing and AI. Who does that largely benefit? Tech workers in India. She's telling her people through the debate that she's on their side because she knows that India is talking about that. They, you know, I'm gonna give you all this video real quick. That's what she cares about. Sponsored a bill and intend as president of the United States to make sure it is passed around recognizing that black women are three to four times more likely to die in childbirth. And when you study the issue, you know that it is not about the education level of somebody. It is not about their socioeconomic level. It is literally about their race. Remember what happened to Serena. 
It is literally about racial bias in the. In and she references Serena because she's a divestor like me, and Serena's important to her because Serena is married to a white man, teen white man, divestor. Serena knows how to play the game. Drake played around with Serena. Kamala's a divestor. So we're bringing it all together, ladies. Serena's of importance because Serena knows how to play the game. And Kamala's mother knew how to play the game, as we talked about in the last video, because Kamala tried to get the most lightest skin see-through Jamaican man she could find. So her mother was trying to give her privilege. Divestors, divesting, getting ahead, by any means necessary. Not immorally. Come on, guys. She talked about AI and quantum physics because that is the future of India. That caused people to not take black women seriously when they walk into the door of that hospital or that emergency room in terms of how they talk about what they need. Um, the agenda includes HBCUs, for example. I am a proud graduate of Howard University. Howard. I know that our HBCUs have raised and helped raise generations of leaders in this country and do it in a very special way that is about nurturing and about creating high standards and challenging young people to be their best, not giving them any excuse, but giving them all kinds of support. So we need to do more. Yeah, I have. I, I'm right now working on, and actually got it out of the Senate, um, and and in and the House passed it around giving more money to HBCUs around their historic landmarks. But there's more to be done around creating incentives for more young people to go into the STEM professions through HBCUs. There is what we need to do around the point that you were raising about the economic disparities. I have a proposal that will be my first order of business when elected president that is about lifting up middle-class working families. And what I'm proposing specifically is that families that are making $100,000 or less would get a tax credit that they would receive at up to $500 a month. Mm -hmm. This proposal, economists across the board have said, would be the most significant middle-class tax cut for American families and generations. But we need the particulars on that because and at the end of the oh somebody triggered by what i'm saying and i already told you what not to do go sign into another account my daughter's on her own account now i told you you're too damn grown to be talking about a, a younger woman you're too grown and if you're a man you're a creep you don't need to talk about my daughter don't worry about us ASMR cooking and cleaning. Go cook and clean. So at the <laughs> it is very strange when old women are always worried about younger black women. You're a weirdo. And again, if you're a young man doing, doing that, you're a pervert. You don't win in that scenario. It's weird and twisted. Because you don't see no old white women sitting there be, uh, ber be seeing that, sitting there berating young white women on a mama stuff. You're a weirdo. Get a life. She don't, you're mad because I'm saying your girl, your AKA ain't got no agenda. She doesn't have an agenda for black people. She doesn't have an agenda for you and your cooking and cleaning. She doesn't. She doesn't have an agenda. This is her agenda. We're gonna go. Let me let me go back and find it, because sometimes again, like I've said again and again and again and again, at the end of the day, this woman is about her people, and her people are South Asian people. It's South Asia is going over there, and you know why it's going over their head? Because they don't like to do any research. India. AI and quantum, they have the answer too. None of your business what my daughter got. You're a weirdo. Why would you care what some younger woman you got? And that's weird. 
and you're masculine because women don't really pocket watch like that. Men pocket watch. Men sit up and talk about money and cars and stuff. Men challenge younger men to have things, physical things, financial things. That's not how women think. That's masculine. Every time these masculine, unattractive women roll up on my channel, that's the stuff they talk about. Never, It never fails. Men care about that. So I'm going to share this tab with you guys because, again, you notice that they're not talking about this stuff. If you go back to the transcript, I think I can give you all the, um, I know I, I know for a fact I have it. I know I have it. Intelligence, the transcript, there it is. Let me see, here it is. Yep, I have it. Let me give you all the transcript. And then I think I can find, let me go to find, control F. Quantum. All right. And so I can, let me, oh, y'all should be able to see it. Let me see what you're seeing. Okay. Let me share the screen right quick. I'm also going to give you all the link to it. In this transcript, Kamala talks about AI. We want to be the leaders in AI and quantum physics. The average American isn't thinking about AI or quantum physics. India is thinking about AI and quantum physics. So we're going to share this tab instead. And I'm going to pull myself down. Okay, I see it. Let's see here. Oh, I got to play it so I can skip it. So one year ago, India at 100 computing the quantum leap to AI semiconductors and AI anchor sauna. This is what they're focused on. Do y'all get it? <laughs> Leave y'all's comments below. I said I was going to get off here an hour ago. Her agenda is for her mother's people. That's not going to change, guys. Her agenda is for her mother's people. That's why she's going to allocate billions of dollars to help in India. And she's doing a crash dummy test course by opening the southern border, southern border so we can now see floods and floods and floods of South Asian Americans coming through the border and being granted citizenship into this country. You can tell our people until they are blue in the face, common sense, and like you said, they're not going to wake up until the boogeyman is at their door. <laughs> It's, it's sad, really. They are going to give away their vote to someone who is trying to replace them. If, if she can't get you with AI, she's going to get you through the back door with South Asian labor. It is a reason why Microsoft, Facebook, and all of these major corporations that have a 30 plus percent workforce of South Asian Americans laid off all these people who were, they were paying a certain wage because for every one American or one person that has come to this country in previous years are being replaced with three of them from that economy. 
And it is going to be a flood of these individuals coming to this country through the border. She's already doing the crass dummy test with other people from other countries. Venezuela, South America, Haiti, Haitians, okay? They are just casualties in her war. She's not worried about being black and defeating Trump. Sometimes I think people are jealous of Trump because he's a powerful, rich person. It doesn't matter what that man shows them he's done for the black community, it still is not going to matter to them because they're on race politic type of stuff. Kamala doesn't care about you and she never will. She can't even answer a direct question on what she would do for specifically when she has gone above and beyond with La Raza, okay? And she's, thank you. Yeah, she always, you always do a test run first. She's going above and beyond with La Raza in California to help Spanish speaking com communities. She loves talking about labor. And that's why I said your homework assignment is to go find out why did her and her South Asian, her mother's dad go to Nambia? What were they doing there? I already know because I'm already working on it through another video. Okay. You don't have to go too hard to fool the majority of black Americans. And it's sad. Even though they can see, but I don't think they're feeling it yet. Until you're really feeling it, then it's not at your doorstep, right? So leave y'all's comments below. To thank y'all so much for watching. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Gray. Thank you, um, Tone. Thank you, little lady. I know you were on here. Um, Pomona, thank you very much. Mrs. Hader, thank you very much. Always leveling up. Sounds band two. Letitia, thank you very much. Art, Allie. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'm going to catch you guys definitely on the next part. But make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And if you can feel it in your heart, uh, you can also contribute to the platform. Thank you all. And I'm going to catch you guys definitely on the next video. What are your thoughts about this AI movement? Our economy has been in a free fall for three and a half years on purpose. Why is that? Bye, everyone.